Hello and welcome to this video in which I will show you how you can run an exploratory factor analysis for free in the Jamovi software. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish. So let's get started. Jamovi is a free software program that you can download from the internet and it is very user friendly in that it allows you to do everything by point and click without having to write any computer code. Also, Jamovi allows you to import data sets in a variety of different formats, including SPSS data. So let's go ahead and open an SPSS data file that we can then analyze with an exploratory factor analysis. For that, we go to open. And then here you can see I have different files that I could use in text format, in Excel format, or in SPSS format. So I'm going to open this data file from the SPSS program math.sav. And this data file contains a number of variables that we can analyze here from different cognitive ability tests. You can see the data file is open on the left hand side. You can look at all the columns of this data set by scrolling to the right hand side here. And so we find the exploratory factor analysis option under factor, exploratory factor analysis. And you can see that the way it works is similar to SPSS, where you have your variable list on the left hand side and you can simply pick the variables that you want to factor analyze and move them over to the variables field. So here I'm going to pick three variables from a cognitive abilities test, two variables from a spatial abilities test called mental rotations test, and then also four variables from a math test. You can see that while I'm transferring the variables over to the analysis field, Jamovi already generates the results output on the right hand side. And there are certain defaults that it uses that I'm going to walk you through here in a minute. You can see that the first table that is provided here by default is a table with factor loadings. And you can see not all factor loadings are depicted. Jamovi has a setting where factor loadings below 0.3 are suppressed here. So if you don't want that, you can set this to zero and then all factor loadings will be shown on the right hand side. You can see now even the ones that are very close to zero will be shown and that can be kind of hard to maneuver visually. So maybe it's good for the moment to at least suppress some of the ones that are really small, let's say suppressing the ones that are below 0.1. Those would typically not be of interest to us. And so when we do that, then we get a pretty clear picture without suppressing all the potentially relevant cross loadings here on this factor. So on these factors, so you can see that we have the first factor pretty much defined by the math variables here in this case. So those all load highly on factor one. So this could be interpreted as a math factor. You can see also the quantitative scale from the cognitive abilities test also loads 0.262 on this factor. So that makes sense that this is a quantitative or numeric factor, a math factor. And then the second factor loads the indicators from the cognitive abilities test. The quantitative scale doesn't load so highly on this factor, but the other two have pretty substantial loadings. And then the last factor seems to be a mental rotations factor where the two MRT test halves are or have the highest loadings. You can see the figural subscale of the cognitive abilities test also loads on the third factor a little bit. It's not very substantial, but that also kind of makes sense because it uses figural material as does the mental rotations test here. And then at the end you have the uniquenesses. So you have the unexplained uh, portion um, at the end of this table. Now let's take a look at what default settings 
uh, Jamovi uses here for an exploratory factor analysis. You can see that here the extraction is called minimum residuals. You can pick different methods such as maximum likelihood or principal access factoring. So I like to do maximum likelihood factor analysis. If we pick that, then the results change slightly, not very much. The rotation method here by default is oblimean, which is an oblique rotation method. That's typically what we want. Oblique means the factors can be correlated after rotation, and that typically makes more sense because uncorrelated factors here probably wouldn't be meaningful. Those all represent cognitive abilities, those factors, and so they are certainly, at least to some extent, correlated. If you don't allow them to be correlated, then this might uh, cause bias in the estimation of the factor loadings. But you can pick a different rotation method here. Varimax would be an orthogonal rotation method, and then there are other uh, oblique rotation methods such as Promax, for example, could also be used here. And then how did Jamovi even arrive at the number of factors? So how did it figure out that we should retain three factors, which seems to make sense here because we have three different tests. And so this seems to fit well with what we would expect. But how did it get there? How did it know that? And you can see that the uh, criterion that it uses by default is a parallel analysis, which also uses randomly generated data and looks at the eigenvalues of a set of random data that show no systematic correlation. And so that's a good method to determine the number of factors and that this happened to produce three factors in this case. You can also select an eigenvalue criterion. So you could go based on eigenvalues. And for example, you could use the criterion to extract factors with an eigenvalue greater than or equal to one. So that's um, a so-called Kaiser criterion that is sometimes used. It's not as good as the parallel analysis. And then also you could use a fixed number of factors. So if, if you have already a theoretical expectation, you can set the number of factors to a pre-specified number. On the right hand side, you can see that you can sort the loadings by size, which again makes the table a little bit easier to read. And then we see immediately the first factor here is a math factor. The second factor is our cognitive abilities factor. And the last factor is a mental rotations factor. So that's a little bit more convenient. You can also get additional outputs such as the factor correlations when you have an oblique rotation method then the factors can be correlated. And then the inter factor correlations would also be of interest. In this case, you can see factor one and factor two are strongly correlated. Remember, factor one is the math factor. Factor two is the cognitive abilities factor. Those are correlated 0.778. That makes sense. So math ability and general intelligence are strongly linked. The mental rotation spatial ability factor is less strongly correlated with the other two, 0.33 and 0.38, which also makes sense. You can also take a look at model fit criteria. So this would allow you to test the model beyond the parallel analysis. And so here you can see that we get an RMSEA, which for a maximum likelihood factor analysis should be smaller than 0.05. That's a common criterion for RMSEA model fit. You also get the TLI statistic, which should be close to one, which here it is, and a chi-square test of model fit. And you can see the chi-square value here is 15.5 with 12 degrees of freedom. The p-value is 0.215, which is not significant, indicating that the three-factor model is not rejected. So that's a good sign. A non-significant chi-square means the model here is not rejected. So it looks like the three factor model is a good model also according to these model fit statistics. What you can also take a look at is a scree plot of the eigenvalues. So that's often looked at for determining the number of factors. When we go down here, then you can see that scree plot and the one that says data 
is the one that uses the actual eigenvalues from our empirical correlation matrix of those variables that we entered into the factor analysis, whereas the simulations one is the one that was generated based on the parallel analysis. And so the way parallel analysis works is it uh, factor analyzes random variables that have no systematic correlation beyond chance, so to say, and then those also generate some eigenvalues. And there's one here above one also. And so then we look at the eigenvalues for the simulated data relative to the eigenvalues for the actual data in the scree plot and where those two graphs here intersect. That's where we would determine the number of factors to retain. You can see that the intersection here is between three and four factors. Therefore, we retained three factors in this case. And that's why Jamovi here right from the start gave us a three factor solution. And then finally, you can also save factor scores if you like to your data matrix. There are different estimation methods that you can select here from this list of factor score estimation and then those can be saved to your data set. I hope you found this video useful to learn about how to run an exploratory factor analysis in the Jamovi software. If you did, please subscribe to this channel. Check out the description for additional resources, including workshops that I teach for Quantfish and I'll see you next time.